If there is one lesson that I highly encourage you to become an expert in, it is occupant load. Because there's no possible way for me to know what's going to be on your NCIDQ exam. But I can almost guarantee that there will be at least one, probably several questions pertaining to occupant load. So let's talk about it, shall we? What's up designers, my name is Kelsey. I'm an NCIDQ certified interior designer and the owner of KLSY, a Manhattan-based design studio specializing in commercial spaces. My mission is to help other designers excel in their career while promoting transparency about the career and industry. If you're on the road to taking your NCIDQ exam, then be sure to click the link down in the description box to sign up for my email list. Um, cooking up a little something special for you. It might be a course, might be something else. I, I honestly don't think I've decided that yet. So um, you'll just have to sign up for the email list and um, wait to see when it launches. I'll let you know. So enough about me, step into my studio. The occupant load is the number of people that a building code assumes will occupy a given building or portion of a building. Therefore, occupant load is used to determine the number of exits needed to allow for safe evacuation from a space and other exiting requirements like the direction of door swings and the size and amount of fire stairs. Occupant load is based on the occupancy classification or occupancy group. The occupancy classifications are assembly, business, educational, factory and industrial, high hazard, institutional, mercantile, residential, storage, and utility and miscellaneous. Within each occupancy classification, there are occupancy subgroups that list the specific types of spaces that would be considered in each. For example, with the assembly classification, there are occupancy groups A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5. Each of these represent different types of assembly spaces which have slightly different code requirements. Assembly group A1 includes things like movie theaters, concert halls, and television studios with live audiences. While assembly group A2 includes places like banquet halls, casinos, nightclubs, restaurants, and bars. They are both assembly spaces where large amounts of people are gathering, but they're spaces that will facilitate very different types of activity. It may be easier to evacuate a concert hall in an orderly fashion where people are sitting neatly in fixed seats than a bar filled with crowds of tightly packed drunk people. You should have this full list available to you in your IBC code on the practicum exam, but it's best to have all of the main occupancy classification types memorized for your exam, since you may encounter a multiple choice question that asks you to correctly identify the occupancy classification of a particular space. For a full list of the occupancy groups within each occupancy classification, I'll leave a link to that page on the IBC's website down in the description box. And if you're currently studying with the David Ballast Kent 7th edition reference manual book, then I would encourage you to read on about this topic in chapter eight. If you're looking for more educational interior design content, then be sure to hit the subscribe button and don't forget to sign up for my email list down in the description box to receive even more designer insights. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.